The 2023 NFL Draft is just a little over a month away. Oh, draft must tree. Oh, draft must tree. And it's time for team by team three round mock drafts. And we start off with a team that has the number one pick in the NFL Draft. <laughs> The Carolina Panthers making the trade with the Chicago Bears to get number one. They're going to get the quarterback, and who is it? Well, I mean, allowing Sam Darnold to walk away means that this is the biggest need on this team. To me, there's only two that you could have traded up for. You either traded up for C.J. Stroud, you traded up for Bryce Young. It, it, from everything I've heard, C.J. Stroud's already picking out houses in Charlotte. So I, I don't think there's really any stress here. It's it's C.J. Stroud, uh, quarterback out of Ohio State. And, and look. If you're if you're worried about Bryce Young's size, I totally understand why you're taking C.J. Stroud. Has some of the best tape I've ever seen from a quarterback. It's just there's not a lot of it. Over the course of his entire career, uh, just under 1,600 snaps that he played in his career, I saw about 80 of them that were A1 since day one. The rest of them, I mean, he's good. He has a really bad problem of staring down receivers until they get open, but that's an Ohio State thing. In, in terms of just raw arm talent, he's got a great deep ball. Uh, needs to learn to take a little of the heat off the howitzer in, in short range. But, I mean, there is there is nothing about him that tells me he cannot be a franchise quarterback. The, these people that say, and we get this a lot of, it, having Bryce Young over C.J. Stroud is stupid. No, it's not. Because in terms of pure quarterback, he's better. If Bryce Young was in C.J. Stroud's body, this wouldn't be a discussion. And I don't think anybody can really even debate that. However, he's not. So, you know, th this is a this a talented kind of old school player of he's not as mobile as as a lot of modern day quarterbacks are. I, it's not that I don't think he can do it, it's just that he doesn't. I mean, he's allergic to running. But as we saw in the National Championship game, when he when he can, he will and he will hurt you. Yeah, and it, that's the other thing is that I've seen him do that one time. It was in the biggest game he ever played. Mhm. Mm missing one of his best weapons so yes that's definitely a great tape and, and he's got he's got good tape other than that i i mean i get it i have bryce young higher but i get it unfortunately he won't have dj moore because dj moore goes to the chicago bears in that trade but they bring in dj shark they bring in Adam Thielen. You still got uh laviska chenault and shy smith and you, you have Marshall. done you enough. got weapons for him you have done enough that you don't have to do anything at receiver, which is what good teams do. I don't – I'm not in love with the weapons. I feel like it's like my dating record before I met my wife. It's a whole slew of threes. But I, I, I'm – I mean, it's okay. You got a deep threat in Shark. You got the dependable slot guy and Adam Thielen. I'm, I'm not as wild about Hayden Hurst as a lot of other people are. But, I, I mean, you've put enough around C.J. Stroud that he can be successful his first year as the starter – and you don't have to shoehorn a receiver because in this exercise, there's really not one there. After you get past the the basically Josh Downs down, there's not really one that you could take at 40, and Downs goes a few picks before them here. So I, I don't have them taking a receiver with that second-round pick. So who do you have them taking with the second-round pick? Felix Anadike Uzama, pass rusher out of Kansas State. To me, edge is a huge need for this Carolina team because outside of Brian Burns, there's nobody that wins consistently. Uh, Izama is, it, there are a lot of pass rushers in this class that I have issues of their ability to ever be three down guys because they're so thin. I mean, Will McDonald's 200, he showed up the combine at 240, I think. I think he played at about 225. That guy's never going to hold up against the run in the NFL. He's just not going to do it. Izama does not have that problem. Uh, the, the pass rush is real good. He's not as good a pass rusher as, say, Will McDonald. But he holds up in the run way better, much more sure tackler. Uh, one of the big drawbacks on him is that there's just not as much tape on him. Really good speed to power. I think he's a perfect complement to Brian Burns and would be a, an excellent pick for Carolina here in the second round. In the third round, they've got San Francisco's pick. And who do they take? This is where you start getting into beauties in the eye of the beholder. And, and I know not a lot of Carolina fans are going to love this. But like I said, you don't have to do something right now. You don't have to have a guy that plays right now. But what I want is, with C.J. Stroud specifically, if D.J. Chark's going to be around, i got the deep threat. I've got two intermediate guys in Hurst and Thielen. I want the satellite player. I'm not – I haven't been wild about LaVisca Chenault as a pro. 
I, I think he's usable, but he's become such a gadget guy that I don't really think he can do anything else. So I, I take a guy in Parker Washington out of Penn State, a wide receiver that a lot of people really like. I and I like him. I just think he's going to take a year to develop. He's really little, five uh, nine, two hundred five. He's going to be slot specific. I, I I don't know that he ever played a snap on the outside, and if he did, it was very very few. So I mean, he's going to be a slot receiver in the NFL, hyper athletic. Uh, I, I think he's faster than what he ran. Uh, his forty time was I think four four nine, which was kind of disappointing to me. But there are some guys that I, when I watch him on tape, he's faster than that. And he's a guy that you just get the ball in his hands and he can do really, really good things. And if if you're telling me he's going to be sitting behind Adam Thielen for a year, I could see a path that two years from now, he becomes what you lost in DJ Moore. Because what he needs to do is follow Adam Thielen around like a puppy that lost its ball. And if he does that, two years from now, he could be an, a, a very good slot receiver in this league. And so I think that's good value. Uh, he, he provides things with special teams now, and, and he's just a satellite player. You get the ball in his hands, good things happen. All right, Carolina Panthers, three-round mock draft. You take off the quarterback, an edge rusher, a wide receiver, taking care of a lot of team needs. That's their three biggest needs to me. Mm -hmm. As we go through the rest of the draft, I would look for them to add another corner. Not because it's a, it's a huge need, but depth is a bit of a problem. Saw it last year when J.C. Horn got hurt. Uh, another running back. I know you signed Miles Sanders, but I, I I still want that thumper. I didn't take one here because it, it, Jameer Gibbs wasn't there in the second round. I would be tempted by that, but I don't think I would do it after I paid Miles Sanders. So I'm going to be looking for a Zach Carbonet, uh, Chase Brown, one of these guys that can really run between the tackles. I want a long-term developmental tight end, and this is the best tight end class I've ever seen. And then I want to add another linebacker. All right, we'll have more of your team-by-team uh, -team coverage here in the Sportsocracy throughout the draft this season. We'll have uh, uh, more of these coming. He, at some point, he's going to reel off a seven-rounder. Oh, God, it's, yeah. it's like my favorite words in English language. Seven-round mock draft. At ESPN Draft Nerd start on talking, Twitter. Start talking about Camarda and kickers and shit. Let's go. Don't if you like these picks, if you hate these picks, feel free to comment that in the comments. If there's a player that you want to know how they fit with Carolina Panthers and why I didn't draft them, throw that in the comments. I answer all of those, and it could be featured in our next Carolina video, which should be coming out next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can join us every afternoon, 3 to 6, in the Ingles studio and on ESPN Asphalt.